this video is for all the 10 standard students. We are going to work out the sample question paper, class 10 science 2022-23. Maximum mark 70, time allowed is 3 hours. I am going to work out only the chemistry questions out of this uh, science question paper. First question is chemistry, let us work out that. The change in color of the moist litmus paper in the given test tube is due to. So, we have given a picture which is already there in the textbook in the lesson acid, base and salts. This picture shows you two test tubes, it is the same test tube. The first test tube has got the dropper containing concentrated sulfuric acid being added to the test tube. The test tube has got already sodium chloride in it. So, you are supposed to know here with the picture, you are supposed to know what is the reaction happening in the first test tube. Once the reactants react, they have corked the test tube and they have put a delivery tube through a small hole and through the delivery tube, one of the products is exiting. So, once you know the reaction, you will be able to apply your mind and predict the MCQ question, the best option in the MCQ question. So, here the reaction is sodium chloride reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to give you sodium sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride gas exits through the delivery tube which is bent at right angles and you can see here a moist litmus paper being shown at the mouth of the delivery tube. The moist litmus paper changes its color. Moist litmus paper also tells you that it has got water medium in it. So, the hydrogen chloride gas when it touches the moist uh, litmus paper, it gets the water medium and it liberates hydrogen ions. So, the answer here opt, opt answer, the best answer here among the four options is presence of H plus aqueous in the solution. So, there are, there are hydrogen ions in the solution. Which solution? The solution formed when hydrogen chloride gas exits from the delivery tube and touches the water medium present in the moist litmus paper. Then and there the hydrogen chloride gas becomes acid and it liberates H plus ions. That is what is expected from you in this MCQ question. I hope it is clear. The next question is in the redox reaction manganese dioxide reacts with uh, hydrochloric acid to give manganese chloride, water and chlorine gas. Four options are manganese dioxide is reduced to manganese chloride and hydrochloric acid is oxidized to water. Manganese dioxide is reduced to manganese chloride and hydrochloric acid is oxidized to chlorine. Manganese dioxide is oxidized to manganese chloride and hydrochloric acid is reduced to chlorine gas. Manganese dioxide is oxidized to manganese chloride and hydrochloric acid is reduced to water. So, here what you are expected to understand is which one is reduced and which one is oxidized. So, you all know that manganese dioxide loses its oxygen when it comes in the product side. You can see here manganese chloride is formed. So, when oxygen is lost, it undergoes reduction. So, manganese dioxide is undergoing reduction to manganese chloride. So, you have to opt for that option. Manganese oxide is reduced to manganese chloride. But we can see that there are two options where we are having manganese dioxide is reduced to manganese chloride. It's there in option A as well as in option B. So, the answer is one among the option A or B. The rest C and D is talking about manganese dioxide is oxidized which is wrong. Now, let us see which is getting oxidized that is hydrochloric acid gets oxidized. So, here manganese dioxide is getting reduced. So, then naturally there is one more reactant. So, it has to get oxidized. So, to what product it is getting oxidized to? So, here you can see hy uh, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid whatever it may be. It is getting a uh, it is losing hydrogen. So, anything which loses hydrogen is getting oxidized. So, here you can see HCl after losing hydrogen, what is the product here on the right hand side? You can see that 
once the HCl is losing hydrogen, you are only getting chlorine gas. So, you can conclude that hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid is getting oxidized to chlorine gas. Okay? It is losing hydrogen and getting oxidized to chlorine gas. So, the answer is best option is manganese dioxide is reduced to manganese chloride and hydrogen chloride is oxidized to chlorine gas. Option B is the correct answer. The third question, you can see the picture here. Somebody is holding the tong with the mag uh, magnesium ribbon in it and with the help of Bunsen burner, it is being burnt. And you can see the burnt ash is being collected in a china dish. Uh, yeah, it's not a china dish, it's a watch glass. So, watch glass, uh, you're collecting the manganese oxide. So, what happens when you burn magnesium ribbon? When you burn magnesium ribbon, it burns with a white dazzling flame. It's there in the textbook. In the first lesson, chemical reactions and equations, you can see that it's in the, I think in the first page. You can see that the same picture is given and then uh, you can see Mg plus O2 giving MgO. MgO is nothing but ash. Now you can uh, check the options. The question is which of the following is the correct observation? Observation means what you see with your eyes. Observation of the reaction shown in the above setup is brown powder of magnesium, magnesium oxide is formed. There is no brown powder being formed here, so that is wrong. Colorless gas which turns lime water milky is evolved. There is no carbon dioxide gas evolved which turns lime water milky, so that is a wrong option. Third option, magnesium ribbon burns with brilliant white light. That is the correct answer, but still we can read the fourth option just to confirm. Reddish brown gas with a smell of burning sulfur has evolved. There is no sulfur being involved in the reactant here, so we can omit that. So, the best answer is magnesium ribbon burns with brilliant white light. With the reference of uh, four gases, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, chlorine gas and oxygen gas, which one of the options in the table is correct? So, you have been given a table with four options. Four columns have got the heading one first column has got acidic oxide, second column used in treatment of water, third column product of respiration, fourth column product of incomplete combustion. So, from this you have to apply your mind and uh, understand which one is for which. Okay? So, acidic oxide out of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, you will conclude that both are non-metallic oxides. Yeah, both are carbon oxides which are non, carbon is a non-metal, so carbon dioxide is a non-metallic oxide as well as carbon monoxide is also a non-metallic oxide. But among carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide is the acidic oxide. Okay? So, the option B and C gives their carbon dioxide. But when you come to the second column, you can see the gas used in the treatment of water, you have studied this already uh, in acid base and salts under chloralkali process. Chlorine is one of the byproducts and one of its uses is treatment of water. So, chlorine gas is used in the treatment of water. So, that is present only in the best option B. When you take the row of B, you will see chlorine comes there and under acidic oxide carbon dioxide is also coming. So, Mostly the answer should be option B. Let us see the third column. Product of respiration. What is the product of respiration? We inhale oxygen and when we respire, we give out. The product is carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide is the product of respiration. That also comes in the horizontal row of option B. Product of incomplete combustion. Whenever burning happens and if it is incomplete combustion, then it is carbon monoxide being generated. If it is complete combustion, then only it is carbon dioxide. So, we can conclude that it is carbon monoxide, best option B. So, we can see best option B as uh, all the answers fit in for it. Acidic oxide is carbon dioxide, used in the treatment of water is chlorine gas, product of respiration is carbon dioxide and product of incomplete combustion is carbon monoxide. 
Let's move on to the next question. Question number 5. On placing a copper coin in a test tube containing green ferrous sulfate solution, it will be observed that the ferrous sulfate solution, so ferrous sulfate solution is green in color, it's also called green vitriol. On placing a copper coin, copper is reddish brown in color, when we place a copper coin in a test tube containing the green color ferrous sulfate solution, what do you observe? That's the question here. Observe means what is the color change. If there is a color change, you have to answer that. So let's see the first option. Turns blue and a gray substance is deposited on the copper coin. Turns colorless and a gray substance is deposited on the copper coin. Option C. Turns colorless and a reddish brown substance is deposited on the copper coin. Option D. Remains green with no change in the copper coin. Now here the concept to be applied is uh, displacement reaction. Uh, for that you also should know the principle of reactivity series. When you consider the reactivity series, you know that iron metal comes above copper metal and copper is below iron. So copper coin will not be able to displace iron from iron sulfate solution since iron is highly reactive than copper. So that is the principle you have to use here. So this displacement reaction will not take place since copper is less reactive than iron. Then what will happen? No reaction will take place and hence the green ferrous sulfate solution will remain green and copper coin will remain reddish brown. Nothing happens between both of them. So the best option here will be option D remains green with no change in the copper coin. Now let's move on to question number 6. Anita added a drop each of diluted acetic acid and diluted hydrochloric acid on pH paper and compared the colors. Which of the following is the correct conclusion? So we all know what is a pH paper. pH paper is a, a, a indicator used to indicate the, whether the solution is acidic or basic or neutral. We know about the pH scale which ranges from 0 to 14, 0 to 7 till 0 to 6.9 we can consider it as acidic, 7 is neutral, 7 to 14 is basic in the pH scale. And according to the values on the pH scale we have the respective colors also. So for that you can refer the textbook, NCRT textbook where the pH scale is given, corresponding colors are also given. So, but here we need to check the options. What is required from us? Option A, pH of acetic acid is more than that of hydrochloric acid. We know that acetic acid is a, dial, uh, is a weak acid, while hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. We have weak acid and a strong acid. What do you mean by a weak acid? Weak acid is something which does not dissociate uh, H plus ions when it is dissolved in water. While hydrochloric acid is a strong acid which dissociates lots of hydrogen ions in water. So, pH of acetic acid is more than that of hydrochloric acid. And you also should know this uh, principle that when pH value increases, acidity decreases. Okay. So, whenever you go towards 7, from 0 to 7 when you move, really acidity is, in, uh, is decreasing. As you move towards 7 from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the value of pH is increasing. What is happening? Acidity of the solution is decreasing. Vice versa, when you move from 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0, acidity is increasing but the pH value is decreasing. So that is some a principle which you should keep in mind. And then read the next option. pH of acetic acid is less than that of hydrochloric acid. Option C. Acetic acid dissociates completely in aqueous solution. That is not at all correct. So we can omit option C. Option D is also wrong. Acetic acid is a strong acid is wrong. So option C and D is purely wrong. Now the confusion is between A and B. pH of acetic acid is more. That is true because... Option A states that pH of acetic acid is more. The value of the pH of acetic acid is always more. 
because it's inversely proportional isn't it ph value and acidity is inversely proportional when ph value increases acidity decreases so acetic acid acidity is less compared to hydrochloric acid so its ph value will be more hence ph of acetic acid is more than that of hydrochloric acid is the correct option let's come to seventh question the formula of four organic compounds are shown below choose the correct option so this question is taken from the lesson carbon and its compounds four structures are bonded structures are given here a b c and d a is a uh, unsaturated hydrocarbon which has got a double bond between two carbon atoms since there are two carbon atoms and it's this it's a hydrocarbon its name is ethene second b is two carbon atoms with a functional group of carboxylic acid c o o h you can see here c double bond o o h so it's a carboxylic acid functional group and there are two carbon atoms hence it is ethanoic acid now option c i mean sorry the structure c is uh, two carbon atoms and uh, it's a purely saturated hydrocarbon with single covalent bonds so it is ethene now d is two carbon atoms with a functional group of oh hence it is ethanol now let's see the options choose the correct option a and b are unsaturated hydrocarbons a is an unsaturated hydrocarbon we know that there is a double bond between two carbon atoms when you check b you see that there is a double bond between carbon and oxygen but as a whole b is not a hydrocarbon it's not a hydrocarbon it's a carboxylic acid so you can say that option a is wrong a and b are unsaturated hydrocarbon is wrong next option b c and d are saturated hydrocarbons c is a saturated hydrocarbon ethene while d is not a hydrocarbon hence you can omit or uh, option b is wrong option c addition of hydrogen in presence of catalyst changes a to c so a is a unsaturated hydrocarbon that is uh, with a double bond c double bond c so when you add hydrogen it will get added in the presence of a catalyst we call it addition reaction but do you get c yes we get c you can see it's a purely saturated hydrocarbon ethene so when you treat ethene with hydrogen in presence of a catalyst you are getting eth uh, ethene so that's the correct option let's see option d addition of potassium permanganate changes b to d when you add potassium permanganate this is b this is b it does not change to d but it's vice versa ethanol when you add to ethanol potassium permanganate it becomes ethanoic acid one more oxygen is given by alkaline potassium permanganate since it's an oxidizing agent and you get from ethanol you get one more o here and converts to ethanoic acid not the other way around so this option is wrong not b to d but it is d to b so it's wrong option so the best option here is addition of hydrogen in presence of catalyst changes a to c option c is the correct answer now we have the chemistry question question number 17 you have to select these consist of two statements assertion reason based questions assertion a and reason r answer these questions selecting the appropriate option given below so there are four options both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a option b both a and r are true and r is not the correct explanation of a c a is true but r is false d a is false but r is true let's see which option is the best for this particular statement assertion silver bromide decomposition is used in black and white photography that's a correct statement we know that silver bromide and silver compounds uh, silver halides basically are used in the uh black and white photography and that's a decomposition reaction it's a photochemical reaction or a light decomposition reaction where light energy is absorbed 
and silver bromide decomposes to silver and bromine which is used in black and white photography so the statement assertion is perfectly right let's move on to the reason light provides energy for this exothermic reaction first and foremost silver bromide decomposition is not an exothermic reaction we know that decomposition reactions all the three thermal light or electrical all the three are endothermic reactions where energy is being absorbed to split into uh, more than one or two products so the reason is false hence the answer the best option will be option c a is true but r is false now let's work out the question number 21 A clear solution of slaked lime is made by dissolving calcium hydroxide in an excess of water. This solution is left exposed to air. The solution slowly goes milky as a faint white precipitate forms. Explain why a faint white precipitate forms. Support your an, uh, response with the help of a chemical equation. So here they have already given here calcium hydroxide solution. So it is CaOH twice. in water plus h2o caoh twice plus h2o this solution is exposed to air okay so you can write caoh twice in bracket you can write aqua equus aq in bracket when you write the chemical equation caoh twice uh, on the right hand side you can write aq in brackets which uh, shows that it is a aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide now what's the next reactant left exposed to air what is there in air which will react with calcium hydroxide nothing else than carbon dioxide uh, you have studied that in first lesson chemical reactions and equations under combination reaction so you can write the second reactant as carbon dioxide gas so caoh twice aqueous plus co2 gas arrow what do you get on the product side calcium carbonate calcium carbonate and you know calcium carbonate is not uh, soluble in the solution so it remains as a precipitate or faint white precipitate is formed due to the formation of calcium carbonate so that is the equation you have to give i'll repeat once more calcium hydroxide aqueous plus carbon dioxide gas arrow on the product side right hand side you will get calcium carbonate solid since it is a white precipitate insoluble in water you can put it in the bracket as solid small s in bracket explain why a faint white precipitate forms due to the formation of calcium carbonate which is insoluble in water so you have to write the chemical equation balanced also and you get the full marks for that particular question now the choice here let's work out that Kirti added dilute hydrochloric acid to four metals and recorded her observations as shown in the table given below. There is a table here uh, with the four metals. On the left hand side, we have the column of four metals: copper, iron, magnesium, and zinc. Gas evolved for copper, yes; iron, yes; magnesium, no; zinc, yes. For this, you need to know about the principle uh, about. Uh, concept about reactivity series we know there is a reactivity series uh, i think in the lesson metals and non metals so in that we know that uh, if we take hydrogen as the reference we have lot of metals above hydrogen we have lot of metals below hydrogen above hydrogen you have on the top magnesium then comes zinc and then comes iron and then comes hydrogen below hydrogen you have copper so metals which are at the top of the reactivity series can react with uh, hydrochloric acid because uh, hydrochloric acid has got hydrogen which can be displaced by the highly reactive metal like uh, magnesium zinc and iron so that is the principle which you have to use here for a displacement reaction to occur the metal which is added to hydrochloric acid it should be above hydrogen because hydrochloric acid has got hydrogen as the metal portion okay uh, so it has to be displaced by a highly highly reactive metal like magnesium zinc or iron 
what about copper copper cannot displace hydrogen from hydrochloric acid because it is below hydrogen so this is the principle you are supposed to know let's see the table whether it's correct the observations are correct or not copper reacts with hydrochloric acid and evolves hydrogen gas that's what gas is evolved which is a wrong observation iron evolves uh, hydrogen gas yes that's a correct observation magnesium does not evolve hydrogen gas that's a wrong observation incorrect zinc evolves hydrogen gas which is a correct observation now there are only two correct observations in the column that is iron and zinc copper and magnesium are wrong observations so you need not comment on that because they have asked you to select the correct observations and give the chemical equations of the reaction involved so you are supposed to find out from these four which are the correct observation that's the first thing you have to do with the help of the reactivity series principle and the principle of displacement reaction so which are the correct observations here iron evolves uh, or iron is able to displace hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid so yes is the correct observation zinc is able to displace hydrogen gas from hydrochloric acid so iron and zinc are the correct observations so you have to write that equation iron plus hcl arrow iron chloride plus hydrogen gas zinc plus hydrochloric acid gives or arrow zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas those two equations balanced equations you have to write here that's the answer now the next reaction i mean next question is 27th question uh question number 27 you are supposed to identify the types of reaction mentioned above in 1 and 2 give one example for each type in the form of a balanced chemical equation so the first equation is a plus bc giving ac plus b you can see here on the product side b is displaced by a and you get ac plus b b comes out of bc and in the product side you can see b is free so in which type of reaction this occurs it is in displacement reaction you can see that a highly reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from its salt solution and you will get a salt plus the metal which is free okay so you can write uh, about iron plus copper sulfate giving iron sulfate plus copper as one of the examples so first one is displacement reaction and the example is uh, iron plus copper sulfate fe plus cuso4 arrow feso4 plus cu second one ab plus cd giving ac plus bd you can see there are exchange of metal ions here a is a metal ion c is a metal ion so you can see uh, ac and uh, bd has uh, formed here both have exchanged ions between themselves and this is nothing but double displacement reaction okay so Uh, the example you can give uh, give here is uh, sodium chloride plus sorry sodium sulfate plus barium chloride sodium sulfate that is na2so4 plus bacl2 gives uh, baso4 plus nacl okay na2so4 plus uh, bacl2 gives nacl plus baso4 you can balance it also now this picture is from chloralkali process it's there in the textbook in the lesson acid base and salts you can see in the chloralkali process at the anode chlorine gas is evolved and at the cathode hydrogen gas is evolved here the brine solution brine solution means saturated solution of uh, sodium chloride and electrical electricity is passed through the reaction and hence you get uh, sodium hydroxide chlorine gas and hydrogen gas three products are formed now the question here is identify the gases evolved at the anode and cathode in the above experimental setup so at the anode which gas is produced chlorine gas and at the cathode hydrogen gas is evolved 
name the process that occurs the process is chlor alkali process why is it so called because chlorine gas is produced as the product by product and alkali is formed in the as the main product six uh, option c illustrate the reaction of the process with the help of a chemical equation so the reactants are saturated solution of sodium chloride so you can write nacl aqueous plus h2o nacl aqueous plus h2o gives naoh aqueous plus cl2 gas plus h2 gas okay and balance it next question is 34th question srishti heated ethanol with a compound a in presence of a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid and observed a sweet smelling compound b is formed when b is treated with sodium hydroxide it gives ba gives back ethanol and a compound c so this question is taken from carbon and its compounds whenever we treat ethanol uh, and we get uh, with a compound to get a sweet smelling compound b that means the sweet smelling compound is nothing else than ester so what should you treat with ethanol so that you get an ester nothing else than ethanoic acid okay that's what you have studied in esterification reaction in the textbook uh, under the lesson uh, carbon and its compounds so ethanol when heated with a compound a compound a is none other than acetic acid or the iupac name is ethanoic acid which is ch3coh so ethanol is ch3ch2oh plus ch3coh gives you ch3coc2h5 which is an ester in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid which acts as a dehydrating agent you also get water as the by product when b is treated with sodium hydroxide it gives back ethanol and a compound c so when b b is what here ester ethyl ethanoate that's the ester when you treat b with sodium hydroxide what are you doing you are doing the reverse of esterification which is saponification what do you get it splits and you get back ethanol and sodium acetate or sodium ethanoate so compound c is nothing else but hydrolysis of sodium hydroxide of the ester takes place okay alkaline hydrolysis of ester takes place which is none other than saponification reaction where the soap is here is uh, sodium acetate or you can also say sodium ethanoate which is compound c and uh, you get the by product acid also sorry ethanol ethanol you get as the by product so identify a and c that's the question here first question is identify a and c a is nothing else than ethanoic acid or ch3 cooh it's also called acetic acid and what c c is sodium acetate formed by the alkaline hydrolysis of the ester b okay ch3 coona sodium acetate that c now option uh, i mean question b give one use each of compounds a and b compound a is ethanoic acid what do you use ethanoic acid for it's also acetic acid or vinegar you call it vinegar diluted 5 to 8 percent of it is vinegar where do we use vinegar we use vinegar as a preservative in pickles okay so you can give that use it's used as a preservative in pickles then uh, use of b what is b b is a sweet smelling compound ester we use ester in um, perfumes so you can give that use then option c write the chemical reactions involved and name the reactions so the first reaction is esterification second reaction is saponification reaction uh, and you can write the chemical equations involved it's very easy ch3 ch2 oh plus ch3 co oh arrow on top of arrow you can write concentrated sulfuric acid h2so4 giving you the ester ch3 co o c2 h5 plus h2o that's the first reaction which is the esterification reaction the second reaction is saponification reaction where you have to write the reactant ester which is b 
CH3COOC2H5. On top of the arrow, you have to write uh, NaOH in water, giving you CH3COONH plus CH3CH2OH. These are the two reactions. Okay. We have a choice here. What is the role of concentrated sulfuric acid when it is heated with ethanol at 443 Kelvin? Give the reaction involved. We know that either it may be esterification reaction or it may be this particular reaction where they have asked what happens when you treat concentrated sulfuric acid uh, while heating ethanol. The same answer, the role is dehydrating agent. It removes water from the reaction mixture. It acts as a dehydrating agent. Ethanol at 443 Kelvin in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid gives you ethene by the removal of water molecule. So it is a dehydrating agent. You can give the reaction CH3CH2OH on top of arrow concentrated sulfuric acid and 443 Kelvin. On the right side you can get, get CH2 double bond CH2 plus water which will be absorbed by concentrated sulfuric acid. Ratio by mistake forgot to label the two test tubes containing ethanol and ethanoic acid. Suggest an experiment to identify the substances correctly. Illustrate the reactions with the help of chemical equations. Now we have a reaction in uh, the chemical properties of uh, ethanoic acid where you add sodium bicarbonate to it and you get sodium acetate plus uh, carbon dioxide gas and water. So that particular reaction of sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate with uh, uh, ethanoic acid will help you to get or uh, to distinguish between whether the given liquid, two liquids in the two test tubes is ethanol or ethanoic acid. Since ratio by mistake forgot to label them, ratio can find out which is which, which is ethanol, which is ethanoic acid by adding sodium bicarbonate to both the test tubes. Ethanol will not react with sodium bicarbonate while ethanoic acid will react with sodium bicarbonate uh, by giving the observation of brisk effervescence of the formation of carbon dioxide gas which you can test with lime water which changes milky. So this particular uh, distinguishing test you can give to identify the substances correctly. You can also write the reactions with the help of chemical equations CH3COH plus uh, NaHCO3 arrow CH3CONA plus uh, CO2 plus H2O Thirty-seven question. Two students decided to investigate the effect of water and air on iron object under identical experimental conditions. They measured the mass of each object before placing it partially immersed in 10 ml of water. After a few days, the object were removed, dried and their masses were measured. The table shows their results. So you have a table here and there is a case study. So this is a case study question where the data is given and depending upon the data, uh, analysis of the data you have to conclude certain answers given in the questions okay so the student A and B have investigated uh, a particular metal piece that is a nail and a thin plate they have uh, measured the mass of each object before putting uh, both the objects in 10 ml of water and then they have measured the masses after putting them in 10 ml of water let's see the mass of the object before rusting. So we know that whenever a metal piece is a iron metal piece not any other metal but iron metal is put in water and uh, uh, it's exposed to air it undergoes rusting that means it gets converted into iron oxide Fe2O3. Mass of the object before rusting in grams is 3 grams for uh, the nail observed by the student A and uh, mass of the object uh, thin plate by student B is 6 grams before adding them to water. After putting them in water and then drying it and measuring the mass they get it as 3.15 gram for student A 
and uh, 6.33 grams for student B. Now the question is what might be the reason for the varied observations of the two students? In the case of student A, the nail is not having a larger surface area, right? While in the case of student B, the thin plate means that it has got a larger surface area. It is exposed to more surface area compared to the sharp object nail. So, larger the surface area, more it is exposed to air and water and hence rusting will be more. Hence, you can see a slight variation and, and uh, increase in the variation in the uh, mass of the plate having uh, from 6.0 to 6.33. A 33 grams have increased while in the case of student A, the nail is 3.0 grams while it has increased to uh, 3.15. Okay. So, that increase has happened because of the increase in the surface area. So, that observation you can answer there. Now, the second question is in another setup, the students coated iron nails with zinc metal and noted that iron nails coated with zinc prevents rusting. That is due to galvanization. Coating of zinc on iron nails is due to is, uh, is called galvanization and it protects iron nail from further rusting. They also observed that zinc initially acts as a physical barrier, but an extra advantage of using zinc is that it continues to prevent rusting even if the layer of zinc is damaged. Name this process of rust prevention and give any two other methods to prevent rusting. So, the first one is nothing but uh, when you coat iron metal with zinc, it is uh, called galvanization. Coating of zinc on iron is called galvanization which prevents iron nail from further rusting. But once the coating has gone and uh, the zinc is protruded, still you can see the iron is not rusted. It prevents rusting even if the layer of zinc is damaged. You have been asked to name this process of rust prevention and uh, give any two other methods to prevent rusting. So, this process of rust prevention is called sacrificial uh, protection or you can say it, uh, it also forms a layer of, uh, 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 it keeps on, since it is highly reactive metal, it keeps on reacting compared to uh, the less reactive metal iron. So, there is a uh, formation of potential there which uh, results in the zinc to get uh, more reacted and uh, iron is being protected there. Other two methods of preventing rusting can be given as uh, oiling, greasing or uh, painting. Okay. Now, next is in which of the following applications of iron rusting will occur most? Support your answer with valid reason. Now, A, iron bucket electroplated with zinc. Rusting will not take place because it is protected by zinc. B, electricity cables having iron wires covered with aluminium. Aluminium is highly reactive metal, so it will react while iron will be protected. Op uh, C, iron hinges on a gate. Iron hinges are not at all protected, so the tendency for iron hinges to react or undergo rusting since it is exposed to air and moisture in the atmosphere. While D, painted iron fence. When it is painted, you are doing a coating on the iron metal, so it is not exposed to the atmospheric air or moisture in the atmosphere. So, the correct answer here which undergoes rusting is C, iron hinges on a gate because it is completely exposed to the atmospheric air and the moisture present, which are the two important components uh, which uh, increases rusting or which uh, leads to rusting of the iron to iron oxide. So, we come to an end of the discussion of the sample question paper, only the chemistry questions. Thank you. All the best for your board exams.